How to Back Up Jenkins Using Copia. We all know that we should be doing backups of our Jenkins controller, but how many of us are actually doing it? Even if we are doing backups, are we confident that we can create a restore from those backups? Finally, what can we do when our full backups take multiple days to complete? Do we just give up on creating those backups? In this video, we're going to show you how to use a backup and restore tool called Copia to efficiently backup your Jenkins home directory. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.319.3. I've also got an AWS account set up. I have an S3 bucket set up with this name. And I also have a separate account that I have a policy applied to that only has access to that bucket. So this account can read, write, and delete only to this bucket. There is a link down in the description to a gist that has the definition of this policy and any of the other commands that we're going to be running in this video. Here's the documentation for Copia. And we're going to take a look at the getting started just to understand what our setup is going to be. I already have the Copia CLI installed on my controller. And there is a UI that's available. We're not going to be looking at that in this video. But the first thing that we have to do is set up a repository. Now, that repository could be a local file system, or in our case, it's going to be an S3 bucket. They also support Google Cloud Storage and a number of other repository types. Once we create it, we're going to connect to the repository. Then we're going to create an initial snapshot. And then from that point forward, anytime we create snapshots, they are all incrementals. So let's go ahead and go over to the shell of our controller. And I'm going to go ahead and become root. Now this is a CentOS-based controller. So when I install Jenkins, I use the RPM installation, and the user that runs Jenkins, which is the Jenkins user, does not have a shell. So depending on how you have your environment set up, you may do this a little bit differently. But in my case, I'm just going to become root and finish the rest of the copy of setup from here. The first thing that I need to do is go ahead and export my AWS access key and secret. And you may be saying, okay, hey, you shouldn't be pasting these out. That's fine because by the time you're seeing this, these are already gone. The copy of CLI uses these two environment variables to be able to authenticate with AWS, and these are the standard AWS key and secret environment variables. So Copy is just leveraging those environment variables. Next up, let's go ahead and create the repository. So I'm saying Copia repository create S3. So that's the type of repository that we're creating. And I'm giving it the bucket that we created over in AWS. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. And we have to define a password to create this new repository. So I'm just going to put in a password of password123. I'm going to go ahead and re-enter that. And it takes just a few seconds, but then it goes ahead and creates our repository. If we were to go ahead and take a look back over in AWS, what we're going to see now is this bucket now has a copy of blob config, a copy of repository, and some other files that are already here. So now we have verified that Copia is able to talk to our S3 bucket. And in fact, we can go one step further and we can go ahead and validate this by running Copia repository validate provider. Now this will take just a few moments. So let me go ahead and run this and let it fast forward. And we can see that it completed successfully. So we've created the repository, then we ran a validation to make sure everything works as expected. So at this point, we should feel confident that once we start creating our snapshots, everything should work as expected. Now, our next command that we're going to run is copia repository status. And if we take a look at this output, what we can see is the description is it's a repository in S3 with this bucket name. It gives us our host name of the machine that we're on, what user I'm currently running as. It just gives us lots of information about our current configuration. So now let's go ahead and create our snapshot. 
And what I'm saying here is copy a snapshot create, and then I'm giving it the fully qualified path to the directory that I want to create the snapshot for. In this case, my Jenkins home directory is var lib Jenkins. So this is the snapshot that I'm going to create. This will take a few moments because it's the very first time that this has been run. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter, and then we'll come back and review it in just a second. And now that it completed, what we can see here is that it's snapshotting root, so that's who I am, at Jenkins, the host name of the server that I'm on, and then the path of what we're creating. We see that it created a snapshot with root, and it gives us a value here and an ID of this. It runs full maintenance. That's for when the snapshot is first created. It found 160 contents. It's looking for unreferenced contents, basically just doing a lot of items right here at the end to verify that this snapshot, when created, is valid and ready to go. Now at this point, I know I've only taken one snapshot, but I can validate the snapshots that are here by running copy a snapshot list. And it's going to list out when the snapshot was created. It gives me the ID that we saw before, the number of files, the number of directories, and it also then gives me how many of these items that I'm going to be keeping. In this case, it's the latest, the hourly, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, and the annual. All of those items can be set up using policies, which we'll see in a few moments. Let's go back over to our controller, and let's make some changes on the controller. Not so much really changes, but we're wanting some changes within our Jenkins home directory. So I'm gonna click on build now four or five times. So this is creating more build logs and items that are around the jobs directory. I'm also going to go ahead and go in and make a change to my configuration file. And let's say we'll go to configure system and let's make one change here to where the, I don't know, let's see what it looks like. Wait for it to render and now, here we go. Let's go down a little bit further to pipeline speed durability settings. Let's change this to performance optimized and click on save. So we've run some jobs, we made a configuration change. Let's go back over to our shell and let's create a new snapshot. And the command that we're going to run is copy a snapshot, create dash dash all. So we're just saying create all the snapshots that we have. So we can see here that it's created a new snapshot with root with a different ID from here. So K427 as compared to K6D6 and it has a different ID. So if I wanted to see the difference between these two snapshots, I can run copy a diff, and I'm gonna put in the first snapshot and put in the second snapshot. And what we can see here is we added a bunch of files, at least under jobs. It added new directories. And then we also see a diff down here for different items for test build permalinks. We also saw new files for script approvals and QXML. So we've added new files, we have changed files. All of these things happened during the second snapshot. So in comparing the two diffs, we can see exactly which files changed. We can't see the contents of those files, but we can see which files changed. Now let's go over to our Jenkins home directory. And if we were to take a look at it, we're going to see a couple of directories that don't need to be backed up. And the three that I'm calling out specifically right now are .cache, .groovy, and .java, because all of these are temporaries and can be recreated anytime a restore is created from this snapshot. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add ignores for these three directories. How do we do that? Well, we are in our varlib Jenkins directory, and I'm going to show you the policies that exist right now for this directory. So I'm saying copy a policy show and then dot, meaning in this directory. If I was somewhere else, I would fully qualify varlib Jenkins. And here are the default policies from a global perspective. When you look at the documentation for policies, there is an overarching global configuration for policies. And then you can also set up policies on a per snapshot basis, which is what we're going to do. 
we can see what the default values are for retentions and file policies. Right now, we can see that there are no ignores there. This will be the thing we'll watch in just a few moments. There's error handling, there's logging details. Again, right now, everything for this configuration is coming from the global policy. So let's go ahead and create our new policy. And it's copy a policy set, and we're saying add ignore.cache, add ignore.groovy, add ignore.java, and then dot, because we are currently in var lib Jenkins. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And it's adding .cache, .java, with the trailing slash, since these are directories, to the ignore rules. To validate that, let's go ahead and do policy show again. And if we look under ignore rules, now we see .cache.groovy.java. And just to verify that we don't have any other policy set up, we can say copy a policy and list, and that will list all the policies that are available. Right now we have two, we have the global, and now we have a specific one for var lib Jenkins. Now up to this point, we've been running everything by hand, but you typically don't run your backups by hand you probably set up a cron job. So let's go do that. I'm gonna go back over to my home directory for root, which is slash root. I'm going to create a script for Jenkins Copia. And the values I'm gonna put in here are, what I'm going to do? I am going to do command that we haven't seen yet. Copy a repository connect. Now by default, in our shell, we had created the repository, so we were still connected. I'm adding in this connect line just to make sure when this process starts up, it goes ahead and connects to my bucket. So I'm not creating a new bucket. Before that was copy a repository create. Now what I'm saying is copy a repository connect S3 and giving it the bucket name. And then we're going to run the command that we ran just a few moments ago, copy a snapshot create dash dash all, meaning just go ahead and do everything that I have defined. Right now we only have just the one defined. So that is that file. Let's go ahead and set the execute bit on that. And now let's go ahead and set up our cron. Let's say cron tab dash E. And I'm going to paste in my AWS access key and the secret access key. Again, you may have better ways of doing this from a security perspective, from a demo perspective, this is okay for me. Again, by the time you're seeing this, all of this has been destroyed. I've set the copy of password. Remember that when we created our repository, we had to set up a password. So this is the password, and that is a special environment variable that Copia understands. And I'm also setting this fourth environment variable, copy a check for updates, and I've set that to false. By default, Copia checks every seven days for new versions of Copia. I'm going to control the version of Copia through my standard yum updates, so I don't need to know about that. And for this example, I'm running this script that we just created every minute, just so we can see what's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and let's watch what happens. So Copia, snapshot list. We're just going to look at this manually to see how many snapshots are here. So right now there are only two snapshots. We have our K6 and our K4. And I'm going to go ahead and run this job a couple more times. And we'll come back over. And we'll just watch. Oh, hey, it ran for us. So what we can see now is we have a KDB, and it's just increasing a little bit. This is not a full backup, but this is what the full restore would be in the case I created a restore from this value. We've just scratched the surface of how you can use Copia to back up your Jenkins home directory. Take the time to go through the Copia documentation, do some experiments, and see what might work best for you and your situation. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV.
Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.